Welcome to this short video that will cover how to add count usage to a customer's subscription in NetSuite using the Zone Advanced Billing module provided by Zone & Company. The difference between count usage and traditional consumption usage is that a lot of companies like to track their usage based on active units. So that could be active licenses, uh, active users, active locations, and instead of feeding NetSuite, the total amount consumed for each period, whether that's monthly, quarterly, or annually, they only want to feed NetSuite the changes when they add a new user, when they add a new location, and have the system potentially prorate that based on the day that it's added. And then going forward, just con continue to bill the active number of units uh, that are in the system. So let's go take a look at an example in NetSuite. So we're starting here on a subscription record for Absolute Inc. This is a one-year contract and we have the default charge schedule set up as monthly. All right, so we currently have one service item on this contract. It's a consumption usage uh, item. So let's add one more to add our count usage. So let's start by giving it a name of count usage, I'm linking into the native item master. Uh, we can see that a lot of the fields that are required have been defaulted. We can set up those defaults in the SKU uh, master within NetSuite. It's also defaulted to the same start and end date of the contract. Uh, I could also have this be starting in the middle of the contract or ending before the end of the contract, uh, but we'll keep it the same yearly amount right now. Uh, in this case, I need to choose a price book. So similar to our other videos, I'll choose the generic tiers and I'll briefly open this up to show you uh, the tiers that we're going to be using. So I have three tiers here. They're all in US dollars, and we're basically just saying, in this case, if the user count goes above five, then all five will be billed at 475. If it goes above 10, then all 10 will be at 450. As in other videos, if we drop this down and go to marginal, we could have this uh, be a blended rate, where the first five are at 499, the next five are at 475, and so forth or I could be using fixed rate per tier where they just be getting billed a flat amount uh, based on the tier that they've met. So if they were at 11 or 12 or 15 users, they would just be billed a flat $450. We can also make this customer specific if we wanted to, if these were tiers negotiated by the customer with the sales team and you don't want to use this price book again for any other customers, I could be doing that here and limiting it to a certain customer. And this is a multi-select or this could represent your list rates that you have published by the company. All right, so going back to the subscription item, I've added the generic tiers. Uh, we can leave everything else as is and go ahead and save this. All right, so let's go back into this service. So what we should see here are 12 charges. In this case, they are starting, uh, they have service dates that are monthly, 9 1 to 9 30, and so forth over the next 12 months. They have a bill date that's actually at the beginning of the period. So we do have an option to bill these users in arrears as they add active users. But in a lot of cases, when you have this type of usage that's based on licenses or number of locations, you are billing it at the beginning of the period for the total active count, and then maybe getting a, an additional bill in that period for any prorated users or um, locations that maybe were added mid-month. So let's bring in some usage and see how we can calculate the first month's bill. All right, so let's just assume that at the beginning of this contract, on 9-1-2018, they had three active users. All right, and in this case, I could be putting in an end date. In a lot of cases for our clients, uh, the end date's the same as the end date of the service item or the contract, and that's what it will default to. But we could be adding things from 9-1 uh, you know, to 10-1 to and having it prorated if we needed to. Um, in this case, I'm just saying, let's activate three users. All right. So I can now rate this. Now there's a couple ways to rate within Zone Advanced Billing. Uh, in a real world use case, we'd be rating across all the different subscription items, um, which is an operation that can be run from this dropdown, execute rating. A lot of times in my demos, I'm just doing them as a one-off and clicking the Rate Now button. All right, so this has successfully rated. If we scroll down to our charges, they've now been updated and we can see that there's a quantity of three uh, at a rate of 499 because that's the tier that they're currently in and so the build amount will be 1497 on the 91 bill run and then on 101 it's going to be the same so basically every month into the future for this entire contract 
they're going to get billed at least 1497 unless they deactivate users um, or activate more, which we're going to do here in a moment via CSV upload. Um, we can see that it's only updated the last four months because I'm, I am creating this into the past. It's currently December, so it's basically saying as of December, we know we need to bill 1497 and it'll continue to rate this way into the future. All right, so let's now assume that it's October and we want to add one more user mid-month and have that prorated. So I have an upload file here that has an effective date of 1012. There is no end date, which means it will automatically co-term with this subscription item. I have a quantity of one that represents the user. And then I have a column for the subscription item. And this is just how we're linking it to that service within NetSuite. As I mentioned before, this is typically um, some sort of ID out of a proprietary system. And it's a custom field we'll add into NetSuite. And that's what we'll use to link the data to different services within Zone Advanced Billing. All right, so let's upload this file and see how it can update the charges going forward for October and into the future. All right, so back in NetSuite, I'm going to drop down on my import export. I do have some save CSV imports, and I'm going to choose the count usage template. So it's already been pre-mapped and pre-configured. So in a real world scenario, you know, usually that Excel file has maybe thousands of lines that we're uploading for the period after you pull the data out of your system, or obviously at a future state, um, a lot of the work we do will be APIs that are linking into these usage records and creating them automatically. Um, so let's go ahead and grab our file for our October usage changes. Click next, we're adding new usage data. We can see that it's already been pre-mapped. You can go ahead and click next. And we'll just go ahead and run this as opposed to saving the mapping. All right, so let's drill back into our subscription item. And if we go into our usage detail, hopefully we should see that we have another usage item here that was added up 10-12-2018 for a quantity of one. So if you remember our charges that are currently at 499, let's go ahead and rate this again and see the changes that will take place. Okay, so a few things have happened. Since this was added mid-month, and I do have the preference to prorate by days, I don't have to prorate, but I, I chose in this scenario that I wanted it to, uh, it's adding one uh, for a service date of 1012 to 1031, and that particular amount is actually being prorated. And then starting uh, in November and December, we're now at a quantity of four, and it's at 499 still, we haven't hit the next tier. And so now the next bill is going to be 1,996 and into the future. Every month will be 1,996 as we continue to rate until we bring changes in, whether we're decreasing users or adding more users. Um, so this is the count usage scenario. Um, it's used in a lot of applications that we have in addition to our consumption usage. Thank you for watching this short video.